My name is Cabanas and your first period calculus class. I hope everyone had a good breakfast because now it's time to do some calculus, some partial fractions. Um, my name is Zoe Anjazak. My name is Andrea Chueca and behind the scenes, you don't see them yet, but you will in a few moments, are Andrew Gonzalez and Douglas Ramon. They will be taking care of problems number three and four later on in the video. Wow. We're talking about this intro. The boys are currently passing out um, a worksheet of the problems that we're going to be doing. So make sure you keep up with our work on the board so that you can write it down on your paper. Now, in order to do partial fractions, we have five steps. The first step is to factor the denominator. The second step is to write one partial fraction for each of the factors. The third step is to multiply. The fourth step find the constant, and fifth and final step is to integrate. Zoe will now start off with the first problem, and how this video works is that the first problem will be a basic introductory problem, and then the problems will go on um, becoming progressively difficult as the video goes on. Okay, so like Andrea said, I'm going to do the first problem, and my integral is 1 over x squared minus 9. The first step, like it's written here, is to factor the denominator. So if we factor x squared minus 9, that gives us x plus 3, x minus 3. So now that we have done the first step, we can now move on to the second step, which is write one partial fraction for each of the factors, which means we're going to separate this um, equation, and we're using a and b to do that. So now we have two separate equations. And now that we've done that, we can officially check mark the second step. And now we're going to move on to the third step, which is multiply everything by the denominator so that we can cancel all fractions. So when we do that, all this cancels out. This and this cancels. This and this cancels. Okay. So now what we're left with is 1 equals a times x minus 3 plus b times x plus 3. So now we've done the third step. The fourth step is to find the constant. So we're finding a and b. And by doing that, we're going to find the answer. And we're going to make one of the variables 0 so that we can find a or b. So what I did here was I'm finding b first. So I'm adding a 3, which would then make a here 0. So now I have 1 equals a times 0 plus b times 6. So this cancels out. And we're left with 1 equals 6b. So then we're going to divide this by 6. And we're left with 1 over 6 equals b. Now we're going to move on to find constant a. So we're going to do the same step as we did for b. We're going to make one of the variables 0. So now we're going to make b 0. So what I did was I put a negative 3 so that it would cancel out. So now I have 1 equals a times negative 6 plus b times 0 which would then give us 1 equals negative 6a. We're going to divide again by negative 6, which will then leave us with 1 over negative 6a. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is the fifth and final step, but I really don't have any more room. So I'm going to erase this so I can show it to you. I'm going to leave the original problem up there. Okay, so then now we're going to do Ms. Kabanis' favorite step. We're going to integrate. So now our problem is Okay, so this is our problem. And now we're going to integrate. And that gives us and this is our answer. Problem number two, which is the integral of 5x minus 4 over x squared minus x minus 2. And the first step is to factor the denominator. So we're going to factor this equation to x minus 2 times x plus 1. So in step two, we're going to write the equation again, which is 
5x minus 4 over x minus 2 times x plus 1. And then we're going to follow step number 2, which is to write one partial fraction for each of the factors. So what we're going to do is we're going to use a for the first one, and we're going to put it over the x minus 2. And then we're going to do plus b, so we can use a different constant, and we're going to put it over x plus 1. Okay, so that's step 2. Now, step 3 is to multiply everything by the denominator in order to get rid of the, of the fractions. So we're going to do 5x minus 4 over x minus 2 times x plus 1. And then we're going to multiply this times the denominator. So we're going to do times x minus 2, x plus 1. And then we're going to make it equal a times x minus 2, x plus 1 over the original part, bottom part of the fraction, so it's x minus 2, and then we're going to do plus b times x minus 2 times x plus 1 over the original bottom part, which is x plus 1. Okay, so then these are going to cancel out, and then this is going to cancel with this, and this is going to cancel with this. So your equation that you're going to be left with is 5x minus 4 equals ax plus 1 plus bx minus 2. So the fourth step is to replace um, x plus 1. We're going to put a negative 1 in there to make a equal 0 so we could find b. So we do 5 times negative 1 minus 4 equals a times negative 1 plus 1 plus b times negative 1 minus 2. And basically what this does is it makes a equals 0. So you have negative 9 equals b times negative 3. And then you have negative 9 equals negative 3b. So you just divide by negative 3. So that will give you b equals 3. So then for x minus 2, you replace it with a 2. So you can make the b equals 0 and we can find a. So you have 5 times 2 minus 4 equals a times 2 minus 1 plus b times 2 minus 2. So b equals 0, so you have 6 equals 3a, and you divide it by 3, so you have a equals 2. Fifth and final step is to integrate. So we have the integral of 2 over x minus 2 plus 3 over x plus 1 dx. So that's going to come out to 2 ln of the absolute value of x minus 2 plus 3 ln of the absolute value of x plus 1 plus c. Here's another problem similar to the one I did previously to just kind of review. So it's the integral of 8x minus 17 over x squared plus x minus 12. So the first step that we've been through is you um, factor the denominator. So it comes out to the integral of 8x minus 17 over x plus 4, x minus 4, because that's what this factors out to. Um, so the second step is to write one partial fraction for each of the factors. So here we go, we have a over x plus 4 plus b over x minus 3. And then you multiply by the denominator in order to get rid of the fraction. So here we go, we have 8x minus 17 over x plus 4 times x minus 3. So we multiply this, so this cancels with this, this cancels with this. And then on this side we have this canceling with this and this canceling with this. So then that leaves us with 8x minus 17 equals a times x minus 3 plus b times x plus 4. So this is the equation that we're going to use in order to proceed with the next step, which is to find the constant. Here, we're going to make a equals 0 so we can find b. So what we do is we plug in a 3, and we do 8 times 3 minus 17 equals a times 3 minus 3 plus b times 3 plus 4. So this comes out to 24 minus 17 equals 7b. We divide by 7 and it gives us b equals 1. Um, here we're going to do the same but with the b, we're going to make b equals 0 so we can find a. So it's going to be 8 times negative 4 minus 17 equals a times negative 4 minus 3 plus b times negative 4 plus 4. So since this equals 0, we're going to have negative 32 minus 17 equals negative 7a. That's going to give us negative 49 equals negative 7a. We're going to divide by negative 7, and it's going to give us 7 equals a. 
So we're done with all these first four steps and now the last step left is to integrate. So we have the integral of 7 over x plus 4 plus 1 over x minus 3 dx. So that's going to come out to 7 ln of the absolute value of x plus 4 plus L ln of x minus 3 plus c. And that's the end.